See if I'm there. I am okay. <laughs> I want to welcome you to East Church. My name is Reverend Lori Crelly, and I want to welcome you to worship this morning. If you're visiting with us this morning, a special welcome to you. There are um, what we call the friendship pads on the inner pocket uh, pockets of the aisle part of the pew. Uh, if you want to fill it out and let us know that you're with us, we'd love to hear from you. Um, and. If you're interested in being on our e-blast, our weekly email about what's happening in the church to keep up on things, uh, give us your email address so we can add, the, add you to that. Um, I want to especially uh, acknowledge we have, a, um, we have guests in with us today that have a service dog, and they are welcome to be with us as, as they are working. And just a reminder to the congregation that uh, you should not pet or touch a service dog when they're working ask for permission from the owners uh, when that if, if you get a chance to see the dog we want to welcome you to us with us today uh, also the uh, the internet connection the, for the live stream isn't working again this morning we are still trying to figure out why those connections aren't working we will upload it following worship and you'll be able to if you hear from somebody from the congregation who said, well, why weren't we online this morning? Let them know to check a little later this afternoon and it should be uploaded and uh, we'll get those issues resolved. Uh, Jameson and our sound people are working on that, still trying to figure out what's going on. If we have to replace a, a piece of equipment maybe? I don't know, so. Um, I want to remind you that we're still having the pledge drive going on uh, and you'll hear more about that around the offering time. Pledge Cards are available out on the narthex on the table if you need one, if you've not been able to print one off from the emails that you've been getting. Uh, and feel free to fill that out and put it into the offering plate or drop it at the office into the treasurer's box. Uh, there's a Sharon Guild meeting this Tuesday afternoon at one o'clock, so check out your um, bulletin regarding that. And Sharon Guild is for our um, older members of the congregation and uh, as a women's get together every month and we're looking forward to having you here. Last month they, they created new fancy gift cards and, and note cards to send out to friends. So um, I'm not sure what we're doing this week, uh, but uh, do come along if you're interested. And please join us for coffee hour following worship in the parlors, which is just down the hall here. I believe I have, Diane wants to come up and share something about our food drive going on. Good morning. We're doing our Thanksgiving baskets for our food pantry people, and we're doing it a little bit differently. So last week I forgot to put a sign-up sheet in the narthex, so today 
there's a sign-up sheet and you put your name if you're going to bring food and if you've already brought it in so I'll know how much um, I need to fill in for that so I just wanted to let you know that we're feeding 25 families for Thanksgiving and I'm really excited about it thank you and you can also, if you wish to send in, if you're not able to go grocery shopping or you want to help provide some of the money that's needed to buy the meat for the, for the baskets, you can do so online or put a note in, uh, in the offering uh, saying that designating it for the pantry. And we'll make sure that that's applied correctly. Um, you may have also noticed, for those who are on social media, that we've also advertised through Facebook and our website for um, the community to donate to, the, to our food pantry. We have a, one of the buckets, one of the big wooden buckets that we collect food for uh, that's normally outside of Second Space. We've put that in the covered archway, uh, walkway, for people to drop off any time, day or night, to bring food by. You can also bring food to the Thrifty Treasure uh, to drop off there if you wish to drop it off or you're concerned about it getting uh, too cold or something like that. For, so when, when Thrifty Treasures is open, Monday, Tuesday, and Saturday, feel free to do that and bring it there. I believe that is it for announcements. Let us begin our worship. And if you are able to join me in the call to worship. I see a new heaven and a new earth, the promise of God for all, a recreation of life and death and life beyond death, a recreation of the here and now, and the sound of rejoicing echoes throughout. Come, let us worship God.
standing. And join me in our unison opening prayer. In a world divided by so many possibilities and perspectives, Lord, help us to place care and respect for others, even if our ways are strange to each other. May your example in Jesus show us how to welcome strangers and bridge divides. May your generous spirit inspire us to perceive the world as you perceive it, evolving and opening into a new day of unity, shared concerns, growing understanding, and wisdom. May it be so. Amen. Let us prepare our hearts for worship through prayer and confession. O oh God, we find ourselves struggling with the vision of Isaiah. We see wars, hatred, and violence everywhere, yet despair of ever stopping them. We see oppression and injustice and persecution, but fail to raise our voices in prophetic protest. We have become a pessimistic people. Help us believe, really believe, in Isaiah's vision of the peaceable kingdom, in your promise of a new heaven and new earth. Let your cry be our cry. They shall not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain. Amen. God is our strength and our salvation. God's anger is turned away, and in its place we find comfort, steadfast love, and forgiveness. With this hope, we can draw water from the wells of salvation with joy and thanksgiving. The peace of Christ be with you all. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Everyone may be seated. And the children's time will be after the bells.
Right, the children come up for children's time? Hi! How are you today? You're four today? I think your birthday was a little while ago, but you're four years old? That's great. I bet you you like drawing pictures, don't you? Yeah, <coughs> so do I. But I haven't drawn a picture lately. So I was thinking about my daughter and she, when she was young, she loved to draw pictures of houses. Do you like to draw pictures of houses? No? I wonder if you could draw a picture of the ideal house. What would be in it? What would be in your house? Hmm? Plain paper? Just plain paper so you can color? What else would be in your house? A shark puzzle, all right, all right. My, my daughter would draw, always make sure that there was a big pool in the picture. And she would draw lots of steps, and she would always make sure that her bedroom had the biggest window. So, in, in, in the scripture reading today, God says that he was going to, God's creating a new heaven and a new earth. God had a vision for a new place for the people of Israel as they came back to Judea so that they would have new houses and new places to live. And the biggest thing that, he, that God says in that text is God says there will be no harm and no danger, that nobody would get hurt in that new place. And I remember you, you, you fell and hurt yourself a while ago. Do you remember that? You had an owie on your head, I think. You, oh, you have a new one on your knee? Oh, my goodness, look at that. So wouldn't it be great to be in a house where you didn't have to worry about getting hurt? <laughs> where you didn't have to worry about falling down the steps and scratching your knee? Wouldn't that be great? God wants us to always have a place that we feel safe and loved and cared for. And that is the ideal house. So I want to ask you a, a request. Can you... Can you make me a picture and give it to me next week of the ideal house that you would have? Draw me a picture of your house. Does that sound like a good idea? <laughs> She's thinking about that. So I'm, this is Mommy. Mommy, what would be your ideal? What would be something in your ideal house? A central vacuum. <laughs> oh, that sounds good. Like, like you find at like, great clips when they... <laughs> All right, that sounds like a good deal. Should we ask? Should we ask your grandma or grandpa what would be an ideal thing in in grandpa's house? A big garage. A big garage. Yeah, I'm not surprised. <laughs> How many have an idea of something they would love to do in their house if they had unlimited money and time? Okay. <laughs> so we're going to dream about houses today. We're going to dream about the ideal place to live. Does that sound like a great idea? All right. Well, let us say the Lord's Prayer together, and we'll send these kids off to their Sunday school classes. I see their teachers back there waiting for them. Let us pray. Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right, off you go. You don't need to take off your shoes. <laughs> I love you. you guys. Have, they have matching boots. It's so cute today. <laughs>
The scriptures tell stories for us to contemplate. Let us weave their words into our own lives so that they become part of who we are. Amen. The first scripture today is taken from Psalm 98, verse 1, and then verses 4 through 9. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for God has done marvelous things. God's right hand and holy arm have gotten the victory. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of melody, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Make a joyful noise before the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and all who live in it. Let the floods clap their hands. Let the hills sing together for joy at the presence of the Lord. For God is coming to judge the earth. The Lord will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. The second reading is taken from Isaiah 65, verses 17 through 25. I am about to create new heavens and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it or the cry of distress. No more shall there be in it an infant who lives but a few days or an old person who does not live out a lifetime. For one who dies at a hundred years will be considered a youth, and one who falls short of a hundred will be considered accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of all my people be, and my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity, for they shall be offspring blessed by the Lord and their descendants as well. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, but the serpent, its food shall be dust. They shall not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountains, says the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you, Chris. Mike, I'll give you a heads up. I'm coming down. <laughs> it's been a while since I've preached from the floor here. So... want to be closer to y'all so let us pray holy one open up our hearts that we might receive a word from you cast away fear and doubt and put let us put our trust in your word amen earlier this year my sister Catherine and her husband Dave decided they're gonna finally renovate the kitchen. How many have taken on a kitchen renovation? <laughs> you know what's coming. So they began to basically strip it down. The, the biggest thing for my sister was the fact that she had had this wall that divided the kitchen from the dining room right next door and said, you know what, that's not a load-bearing wall, Dave said. We can take it out. She's like, finally, yes! She had a really small kitchen, like maybe maybe 10 feet square. So they began to tear down and tear down the, the kitchen down to nothing. And she had this vision. She had been wanting to do this for years. But now, because of life and new, the, the kids are married, they have kids, we want to have a place. We want to make sure that we can have everyone around and in near the kitchen when I'm cooking was her plan. I mean, if you're like my house, everybody wants to hang out in the kitchen while you cook, right? So same thing with my sister. She said, that's it, we're gonna do this. Well, that meant that they had to live 
for several months with their portable kitchen downstairs with a hot plate and a crock pot and a microwave, and that was about it. How many can relate to that experience? And so, you know, who likes camping for four months in their own house, right? <laughs> so they knew that they needed to knock down some walls to make sure that those that they loved could be around them and could feel at home and comfortable in this house as they grew. And I think we can all relate to that feeling that there are times in our lives where the old way of doing things, the old structure wasn't working out anymore. It wasn't enough. And you might have to take down a wall. You might have to bang out a window. You might have to remodel a space to make it fit your current needs. You know, at, at my house, sometimes you can do it on a low budget. At my house, we did it on a low budget by just upgrading some of the things outdoors so that we could actually entertain even into the fall by having a little heater, you know, a uh, little propane um, fire pit and lighting around the patio so that we could sit out there at night with friends and have a drink and talk and stuff like that. Believe it or not, we f have friends now. So it's been a year. <laughs> when I lived in Brighton, it was hard to have friends. And I'm so grateful that being here in, in Grand Rapids, uh, even my introverted family have friends. So those who know Amy and Laura, they're both introverts. Uh, but we, yes, we, we now have friends. So those changing lifestyles are important, you know, that we need to stay up, stay current. And when you start to do that, you start to imagine, well, what, what else could we do? What, what other in improvements could we make? If we're going to take out this wall, what are we going to do? What, maybe we need to redo the floor, you know? So, but of course, those kinds of changes, those kinds of big changes, like renovating a whole kitchen, doesn't happen overnight. It's not like you can just go, okay, I'm going to put in a new kitchen and next morning you go in and you start cooking on your new stove and start using your new fancy dan fancy refrigerator with the dispensing water. No, it takes time. And it's an inconvenience, right? You, you've got to get used to maybe a new way of walking through that space. Maybe you have to get used to the, the lighting or you have to get used to things functioning differently. I mean, I still go to my cupboard and I pull open the second drawer thinking I'm going to find the hand towels, but that's where I've put the, the Ziploc bags and stuff. You know, that, those kinds of things. It's hard to get out of the routine, right? You, you take, a, take a while to change. But you take time and you plan to do some of the deconstruction, the tearing down of the old stuff to make room for the new stuff. Some of the stuff will stay, some of the stuff will go when you make those changes. But you, you are able to move forward because you have a dream, you have a vision of what it's going to make, how it's going to make your life better, how it's going to make your life easier, how it's going to make your life more accessible for you, right? And you hold on to that dream you hold on to the idea of the whole family being able to be in the kitchen but not crowd the cook because you're going to have a new island here. And you're going to take out that wall that was dividing the kitchen from the dining room so those others could sit at the dining room table and still feel like they're in the kitchen. Right? That was the dream that my sister was able to hold on to and keep moving forward even through the deconstruction, even through the dust, even through the discomfort of having to eat takeout or to cook on the bar in the basement. She was willing to make those changes and make those discomforts because she knew what the end result was. She had that dream of what that end result would be. And we see in the passage out of Isaiah today what God's end dream was of this idea of a new earth and a new heaven. 
It says at the end there on verse 24 and 25, the wolf and the lamb shall feed together, the lion shall eat straw like an ox. But the serpent, its food will be dust. They shall not hurt or destroy on my holy mountain, says the Lord. That was the vision. Think of the, 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 the people of Israel were coming back from a, a generation-long exile in Babylon. They were coming back and needed a vision for why they should come back to begin with and why they had to go through the discomfort of coming back and finding the place in disarray. They needed a vision for what it would be like, how it would be different for them. And so God inspired Isaiah to say these words, to remind, to give the people a vision, an image of what it could be like. To rethink, hey, what can we do differently? What was it that made us go into exile to begin with? How can we keep from having that happen again? And the vision and the prophecy that we read in Isaiah is God's response to that question. Imagine the idea that children will not die from malnutrition. Imagine the idea that if you die before you turn 100, that you die prematurely. The idea that you could plant food and harvest it three months later, later and it's still there. The idea that the work of your hands is something you can pass on to your children. Those are the images that God is presenting in this text, inspiring the people to endure the struggle of reconstruction. To struggle through that. What is it going to look like? And Isaiah takes the people in their minds, reminds them of the original promises of God given to Abraham. It, in Genesis, God says to Abraham, I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. This is a prophetic word from God reminding us, reminding the people of Israel, you are meant to be a blessing to people. What got them in trouble was the selfishness and the, 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 the greed that had inhabited them and kept them from caring about one another. But God was calling them back to a place of being a community of caring for the least of these, of caring for those that were in need, or in creating a space that would be loving and welcoming to all. There would be no harm. Remember those words. There would be no harm, and no one would be destroyed on my holy mountain. That was God's ideal. So God was giving this testimony, this prophecy, as a vision, as an invitation to the people to sign on to God's dream, God's dream home for the people of Israel. To be encouraged to do the hard work needed to make it happen. God couldn't just snap God's fingers and it was there. We had to get involved. The people had to be involved to make it happen. They had to buy into it, buy into the struggle of that great innovation, that, that reconstruction that was needed. Yeah, maybe you have to cook food on a hot plate for a couple of months. Maybe you have to deal with dust in the house everywhere and clean extra hard. But you held on to the dream because you knew what it would mean in the end. When we look at the things that God is promising to the community of Judah, to share in this dream, again, that babies would not suffer and die prematurely. That people would have all that they need by the work of their hands. They had a shared value 
of what this meant for the people. Everything was the people's experience. It was for the common good. And that was part of what God was wanting them to reorient around, to break down those walls, those barriers that prevented them from caring for one another, from feeling included in the bigger circle. We needed an image that we could rally around. They needed an image that they would rally around and get behind. One of the blessings about remodeling is to address the current needs that you're experiencing, right? To address and to answer some of the problems that you've struggled with. Here at East Church, we've done that several times, right? We've looked at our facility, we've looked at our congregation, we've looked at the work that we're doing here, and we said, you know what, we can improve on this. I'll give you an example. 40, almost 40 years ago, can you believe this? Almost 40 years ago, with the help of this man over here, I'm going to point Ed out. Ed's like, what? We realized that we needed to make sure that this place was accessible to all. Right? We built this elevator. We raised the funds. We built the elevator. We put in a loop system so that people with hearing devices could hear better, both here and down in Fellowship Hall, so that people could communicate and understand what was going on, that people could come in. The people we love and, and the people we don't even know. We wanted to make sure that people could be here with us. And so you guys can, t Mark can tell us stories about what it was like, Ged could tell us stories about what it was like getting that elevator put in, how long it took to plan that event, to raise the money, and then to go through the construction to make it happen. And that is one of the pride and joys of this congregation, that we have been able to do that. But that was, that was almost a generation ago, people, right? 40 years ago. 20 years ago. 25 years ago, we wanted to be accessible to people who were experiencing homelessness and began IHN here, that we still do, we still participate in. 20 years ago, we became an open and affirming congregation. That means that we went through a process where we realized that we have our own barriers in our culture and in our thinking about people of color, about gay people, and, and people that identify as part of the LGBTQIA organ groups, and realize that we needed to reform. We needed to tear down some walls. We needed to deconstruct our own thinking around these issues so that people felt more welcomed and loved, so that we could express God's love in a greater way to a larger circle of people. Three years ago, along with the rest of the world, we experienced the beginnings of COVID. And we suddenly realized, oh, we can't gather in this beautiful place. We needed to jump on it, right? I wasn't here, but all of you were. <laughs> but Jameson, Jameson and others of the congregation who understood technology and understood how to transform this place so that we could be online within, within a couple of weeks. I don't even know how long it took. Two weeks, maybe? We jumped on it, and we said, we want to make sure that people can see us online. And we are still doing it today. Unfortunately, we have some technology problems today, but we're on it. And we're committed to that because we want people to be able to access us, even if that means from home. Now, right now, I'm going to take a pause. I want you all to turn around and wave at that white box on the wall there. 
and say hi to everyone at home. Every week we have 40 to 70, sometimes 100 people, individual sign-ons on that computer, uh, uh, through, through YouTube. I don't know who they are. You don't know who they are unless they say, oh yeah, I saw you on TV. I, I had a church member, uh, I said, oh, I haven't seen you in church in a while. And she said, I watch you every week online. I'm like, oh, yeah, you're right, I'm sorry. <laughs> it caught me off guard. I, I need to be reminded that we have family and friends, people who even as far away as Florida, watch us online almost every week. When you all snowbirds go south, <laughs> I know you're signing on. But we're committed to that because we want to make sure that this is an accessible place. This is a place where you can feel loved and welcomed. So sometimes we have to look at how do we, how do, we do some rebuilding? And we're feeling that as a congregation, we know that we need to do some rebuilding along with every other church that experienced an impact from COVID, right? Every faith community is struggling with people coming back into the congregation, in part because a segment of our congregation still says, it is not safe for me to be in worship or I can't get there anymore because I'm now not able to get around as well. In two years, we forget how quickly that change can happen for people. And we have members who don't sign online because we're not taking the precautions or that they're signing online because they're not in our sanctuary because they don't feel safe because a lot of us are unmasked. And I commend them for that. But we need to remember that and to do what we can to accommodate their needs. Give them a call on the phone. You know who that is? You know somebody that you miss here having in church? Call them. Send them a note. We have a wonderful ministry through the Sharon Guild of sending cards every month to people. But all of us could be doing that. I spend every Monday calling people, going, hi, how you doing, what's up? Those are the things that we do to stay connected and to make sure that we are connecting with others. So part of the work, part of this work to doing that, if you do any type of renovation, you know this, you first have to figure out your budget. What can we do? What can we afford? And for us, the pledge drive is our budget, right? It sets a majority of our budget. Second, we need a vision. We need to capture an idea of what, what we want to, who we want to be, what we want to be reaching out to. Where are our priorities as a ministry, as a church, as a community place, a place of gathering? We had a gathering here on Friday night, a concert uh, with the um, uh, Grand Rapids Climate Coalition and um, City Chapel and the Plaster Stewards, Plaster Creek Stewards were here. And some musicians that played up on our stage, up on our, what we call the chancel, they called it a stage. And their music wasn't necessarily for everybody. Semler, the, the headliner, is somebody who's going through what, what I've, you've heard me talk about, deconstructing Christianity. They've struggled with their own Christianity and f finding out, does the church really love me or does it not? And one of their songs that they sing, they say, the church kicked me out, but Jesus, got, Jesus has my back. And that speaks volumes to me. I've been there. I've known what it's like to be rejected by a faith community. And during, during the show, there were several times where the musicians are like, I can't believe they let us in here to sing these songs. I sing right along with them because I know what they're feeling. And I think many of you might also. So we need a vision of what we as a church will be and are. Reaching back like we do 
to, to Abraham to say, how can we be a blessing to the nations? How can we be a blessing to this community around us? And then we need a plan. How are we going to get there? How are we going to do that? And that's what we've been working on. We've been working on this, trying to get some, some plans together, trying to get some ideas together, and we're still working on it. Watch for opportunities to talk and to get together to hear about it. But to help us with that visioning plan, I encourage you especially to be watching, especially for those who are watching online, this is my question to you as a congregation. And these, whatever you send to me, we will pass this on to the, the, the Futuring Committee that is working on how to create a, a dialogue and to start to craft a plan. I want you to do two things. One, and this is for the people online too. One, what is an idea, one idea that you have for this congregation? What might be something in that vision, list of things that you want to see happen here? And two, share with me, share with us a wall that needs to be torn down. A barrier that either you experience yourself or you see others who've communicated with you why they don't come back or why they can't be here. What would make us a better community by tearing down a wall? What would make us more accessible to be in a community that people want to be at because they can come in, they feel loved and welcomed and it's easy for them to get in here? And I don't just mean physically. I mean emotionally. I mean spiritually. If you've experienced religious trauma, just the idea of seeing the stained glass window or a chancel with a cross on it can be traumatizing. So how can we be more accessible? How can we create community for somebody who says, I can't walk in this space? But maybe second space is okay. Maybe meeting down at Hall Street Bakery is okay. Maybe gathering at a person's house is a way for them to be accessible. So we need to be creative. Listen to one another, listen to the community. Hear where the hurt is and hear where the cravings are, the passions, the yearnings are. Behold, God is creating a new heaven and a new earth. Behold, God is creating a new East Church. Will you be a part of that vision? Will you proclaim the visions that God is giving you of what that would look like? Amen. Let us sing together hymn number 558, How Glorious and Full of Wonder.
may be seated. In this time of our service, we gather our hearts together to lift up and to share with one another the burdens and concerns and the joys that we have in our hearts. Yes, Diane. So, right. so Diane asked for prayers for her uh, family, her son and uh, daughter-in-law and the family as they get ready to move while she's pregnant. So, and prayers for her healthy delivery on that. Yes, uh, Kathy. Okay, so uh, Kathy was saying uh, words of praise and thanksgiving for the Fannie Lou Hamer event that we were part of uh, over at Wealthy Theater on Thursday night, and then the event here on Friday night with Semler and people from the uh, eco-justice community and the way that we were able to support and connect with so many new people through that event, uh, some of which are in the house today, so thank you. Um, and then also then prayers for um, a person, the commissioner from Ward One, who just passed away. No, he didn't pass away. He just didn't get elected. Oh, he didn't get elected. Okay. And to understand, understand the, the racial dynamics of that election, and also uh, prayers for uh, her family as they, they are facing some health issues. So, other prayer requests. Yes, Mark. So first in remembrance for both the Sloop and the Johnson family as they uh, carry the grief of lost loved ones. Um, Kim's uh, husband, the flowers are in remembrance of him, and then also uh, Mark's dad who passed away three years ago. So prayers for the family and all that. <coughs> Steph, did you have something? So prayers um, for a, a newborn that we're, we've been praying for the family for a couple of weeks. The little boy was born, but has a serious health concerns, heart condition that needs surgery, and um, is on life support right now. Prayers for the family and all of their decisions that they need to make regarding this young precious life and, and what, what the future holds for them. So prayers for them. Others? Yes, Ed. Yes. So gratitude for a peaceful election, um, that there was no, at least here in Grand Rapids, no violence. And it, it freaks me out to think that we even have to be worried about that, but that's another story. 
Others. Yes, Alice. So prayers for Alice's cousin, who recently had uh, brain surgery, came through that well, but now is facing uh, more um, surgeries or, or, or uh, upgrades, <laughs> upgrades. Um, just you know, having some connections and uh, what that might bring in prayers that, that continued positive success. success. Yes. So gratitude for our vision as a congregation to be involved in playing a, an important role, the amount of water that flows into those drains, into our um, rain garden every time it rains and every time it snows, the part that we're playing and understanding in the bigger scope what that, how that is impacting Plaster Creek watershed and beyond, and our gratitude that we're playing a, an important role and encouraging others to do so. I want to also lift up um, Kay's dad is recovering from um, sudden brain surgery that was an emergency brain surgery that he had to have for a brain bleed that was happening and continued prayers for her son as he's seeking continued care and also prayers for Alice and the ongoing health issues that she's facing herself. So I saw another hand. Yes. So prayers for our friend here. I don't remember your name. Oh, yeah. Anastasi. 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 A-R-A-C-E-L-I. Arasai. Um, and and she, she's one of our guests. She's from Plaster Creek. And for her presence here today and just the, the echo of the spirit that is communicating to her uh, through, through being with us this morning. And prayers for her and her partner and the the both emotional and spiritual issues that they're facing and wrestling with. And may God's wisdom and grace be with you. Any others? Yes, Jackie. So prayers for Jackie as her three members of her family are all facing surgeries this week, this month, and prayers for healing and restoration for all of them. Also continued prayers for Lou as she's recovering from hip surgery and um, other prayer requests are also in your bulletin. Feel free to look at those, take them home, pray over them, and remember those that are in ongoing need in our congregation. Let us take a moment of silent prayer. Holy One, we are grateful for your work in our lives. 
May we hold on to the visions that you give us, that you speak into our hearts for hope and for healing, for expanding the love of Christ around us and in us and all the ways that we receive from you love and grace, healing and comfort. Be with all those that have lifted up prayer requests, both spoken and unspoken here today. May your spirit be at work in their lives to bring healing, to bring restoration, to bring comfort, to bring wholeness. In your name we pray. Amen. Stewardship moment. Happy snowy morning. My name is Chris Corndike, and I am a lifer. That's what they call me. Baptized right here at one and a half months old. I began singing in the Cantus Choir at the ripe old age of three. I was confirmed right here, right here, um, in ninth grade. Confirmation was a rite of passage, a passage into membership, and at the end of that Confirmation Sunday service is when we are encouraged, no, expected, to start giving to the church. You're confirmed, you're a member now. What can you afford to give? I put a quarter a week in the offering plate, 5% of my weekly allowance. Not long after that, I received my own envelope number. I felt important. I felt counted. After high school, I went away to college, like many do, attending church on the weekends that I was home so I could sing the choir, of course. A year after I graduated from college, I met Jackie. She was quickly welcomed into church life, partly because she was associated with a lifer. We had a commitment ceremony in the chapel in 1996. Marriage was not legal for us then. Eventually, we had our baby Jackson, who was baptized right here. Then five years after that, baby Spencer, who was baptized right here, and on an Easter Sunday, no less. I kept church busy, singing in the choir, presiding over Women's Fellowship, Grace Guild, Kitchen Committee, Rally Sunday, and the annual Women's Retreat dragging my children along to meetings when necessary while Jackie drove her UPS truck. Jackie and I began volunteering from IHN from the get-go under Reverend Brian Byrne. And over the years, I also served on the church council, worship and fine arts board, and other committees that were of interest to me, including sitting on the ONA discussion panel. I may or may not have had a scuffle or two regarding the rainbow flag out front. Then in 2017, Jackie and I were able to be legally married in the chapel once again. As you can gather, to me, East Church is more than Sunday morning worship. There is a fantastic fleet, stewardship, fellowship, friendship, discipleship, and most importantly, the armada of relationships. I still have my own envelope number although we now give our pledge online. And I highly recommend this avenue if you're able, since you can work it right into your bill paying budget and don't even need to think about it. Until this time of year, of course, when it's time to revisit how important this place is. Because really, what good is sitting alone in your room? Come hear the music play. Life ain't no fun without East Church. Come join us here today. Put down your Sunday paper, your coffee, and roll. It's time for a holiday. Jump in your car with a friend or two and drive to 1005 Giddings Avenue. Come taste the Welch's grape juice. Come hear the organ cut loose. Fall on your knees and start your praying. It won't be long till you'll be saying, why, yes, moderator, I'll serve on a board or a committee or two. 
life ain't no fun without East Church. Come join us, all are welcome, even you. Come with your fears, your questions too. Hey, we won't throw you out, even if you insist. In, in fact, you'll have to beg us to take you off our list. So, turn off Billy Graham, he ain't got nothing on us. We're rebels with a mountain of cause. Get off your duff and try East Church. No need to waste 20 years in a search. Find your pew for life in which to perch. And come join us here today. Don't forget to pick up your pledge card on the way out. start out in the choir at age three and now you're a professional singer <laughs> so as she said at the end if you want a pledge card you've not picked one up they're out in the narthex uh, <laughs> this is normally our time for collecting our offering we have plates out in the sink out in the narthex that you can drop off your offering or send it online look at the front of your bullets and for details God's gifts are all around us and live within us let us now respond in faith, love, and generosity as we rise to celebrate the many blessings that God gives us through singing of our doxology. Please join me in the prayer dedication found in your bulletin. God of abundance, you have called us to be the church, and so we share our abilities, resources, and love, committed to the way of generosity, kindness, and grace we offer ourselves. Receive all that we offer today. May each person who is touched by this offering know your love for them. Amen. Let us now close our, our, with our closing hymn, Sent Forth by God's Blessing.
from here open to the new. Go from here open to what is startling. Go forth from here prepared to let God change your mind and heart. God is working through our lives of those we would least expect. God is working through our lives when we least expect it. Let us be open to God's work in us and in others.